How to start a support group for partners of sex addicts. This is a really important topic because partners of sex addicts do really good if they're connected to each other, physically or virtually. But how can you, if you're a partner of a sex addict, start a group in your area? You know there are many women like you who are married to or in a relationship with a sex addict. You know there are many hurting women personally. And as soon as you let the word out that a group's happening, oh my gosh, there's so many hurting women like you. So let me help you figure out how to start a support group. That's our topic today. If you have yet to subscribe, please do. Because if you're a partner, we have so much information for you and recovery and uh, all of that. And if you have a question, please put it in a little box. We'll be happy to get to that. And stay tuned. Starting a support group for partners of sex addicts, that is a huge thing. And first of all, if you're even considering this, thank you. Because there are so many times women call our office and we have nowhere to send them. We have tons of phone groups in, in that uh, counselors run that they can do. But some women like to sit in another room face to face and talk through the issues of recovery from having a spouse or a partner who's a sex addict. Now as a partner, you didn't, didn't make this happen but the damage of this is huge. And if you're a partner, you personally understand that. So before we get into the support group, I wanna talk about support group versus work group. So a support group is you sit in the room and you, you sometimes you just puke and go and you don't have to do any work and we support you, we love you, we care. A work group is different. And partners groups are work groups. Partners groups have structures, they have uh, materials you work through, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, you present your steps, you make phone calls, and you're focused on your recovery, you're not focusing on his relapse or what he's doing or what he's not doing. This isn't a gripe session about the sex addict. This is, I am here to heal me from the damage of his sex addiction. And you can, but that's the difference. Support is just sit, listen, Work is having a check-in. So I wanna go through the steps, okay, of a work group process. And if you haven't gotten one of these, they're probably online. Um, this is a partners group brochure, okay, and it'll help you walk through the whole thing. And you can just print this off, it can be really, really helpful. Also, if you're gonna, you know, be in, if it's gonna be in a church or in a counseling center or someplace, you can get these brochures and just put your little sticker on the back and let them know that you're there. But in here, we talk about exactly what you need to do. As far as work group, there's the opening. Okay, that's the person who's leading group. Now, let me just tell you, as a leader or servant leader, you don't need to lead this group for 25 years. Just start it. And as you work your recovery, you know, the ladies work their recoveries, there will be other leaders that will come and groups will multiply and other leaders can take, it, uh, take those groups and start those in their locations. So it really is a, it's a huge opportunity. Now, once there's an opening, there's the check-in. Okay, and this is the difference between support group and work groups. In, in a support group, you don't check in on your step. You don't check, check in on your workbook progress. You don't check in on your calls you made that week. And you don't check in on how you acted out this week. Okay. <laughs> and so in a work group, you do. Hi, my name is Mary. This week, uh, I made six phone calls out of seven. I'm on step two and have been for two weeks. And I'm on exercise 34, I did exercise 30 to 34 this week. And sometimes groups will have you share a little bit of what you learned. That's okay if they do that. Each group has its own flavor, but that's a check-in. Now, the phone call part of that is where you call the ladies all during the week and you check in on, you know, if you're, if you're having a bad day, having a good day, what work you're doing, just a couple minute phone call to check in with other ladies in the group, okay? And in, in, in the partners group, they follow the five C's, pray, read, call, meeting, pray. Thank God for you know being in recovery and healing you. Read literature related to sexual addiction recovery. And you know, you're gonna be getting these books because this is what the group does in a work group. 
Okay, in the support group, you don't have to read anything. In a work group, partner's book that explains a lot of the stuff that you've had happen to you as a partner, how it affects you. Then we have the, the recovery guide. These are the exercises. This is like therapy in a box. And then we have the step book as well. That helps you walk through the 12 steps. And you do these two workbooks at the same time. You just work through them together and then you report in as you're doing them. And in many work groups, you will actually present your step. You'll go through your whole step process, read it to them, and they'll give you feedback on that. And there's a feedback form. So that's a huge difference. And I, I will let you know, if you're you know, doing this in a counseling center or a church or someplace, and they want to buy 10 or more, there is a discount, just call my office and they can walk you through that. But we did the check-in, then there's the group topic. And this could be decided by the leader or depending on the structure of the group, a, a different person every week could present the topic. And in the brochure, we have a list of topics. You know, it could be a step topic, it could be boundaries, it could be sex, it could be all kinds of things you guys can get into as a topic for your recovery for that day. And then I need to back up because in the check-in, there is feedback. And this is really a different thing than in a support group. In a support group, you just talk and no one gives you feedback. In a work group, you do get feedback, but you ask permission. Sandy, can I give you feedback? And if Sandy says yes, you can tell her what you're thinking. Because you might have positive things to say, or you might have questions. And you want to stay away from being critical, but it's okay to ask questions like, okay, you've been on step one for 14 weeks. Can you explain that to me? <laughs> okay, I have kids too, but okay, are you trying to do the recovery work or are you just trying to come here and just share? Because recovery is work. So it gives that time for feedback. So after you do your check-in, there's feedback, there's the group topic, okay? And then you can, you can close and they have different rituals. Some people do Lord's Prayer, some people have a little saying, keep coming back, it, it works if you work it. However you wanna do your close is fine. That's kind of the structure of a working group. And working groups are healthy, okay? They aren't allowing you to just bash your husband. They're not allowing you to get into that kind of dynamic. In a support group, it's harder to manage that because they're just talking. But in a structured group, you are focusing on recovery. Now, if you actually start a group, you're gonna to have to market it somehow. You can uh, let people know in the 12-step community. You can let churches know, women's ministries. Also let women who um, do any kind of partner counseling, but also if you Google anyone who treats sex addiction, please send them an email or call them and or meet with them and say, listen, we have a free group. It meets Tuesday at such and such a place for any of the wives. Because often in smaller sex addiction practices, they don't have groups for wives. And partners groups are very, very needed. So they'll refer to you because you're not a threat to them. You know, you're not competing with them. So it's really, really important that you Look at that. Now, if you do a partner's group for a while and you want to do partner child trauma group for a while, you can do that. This is up to you. This is your group. All right. Now, what you can do if, if you feel like, hey, I'm not sure I'm qualified. Well, here's your qualifications. Firstly, can you read? Can you listen? Can you love? And can you have a place to meet? If you can do that, great. Now, if you're meeting in a church, they're going to want to probably make sure that you're okay you have to go through your own process there. But there are some ladies who really like, you know, Doug, I really want to know more about this. Okay, well, I'm going to show you something here. It's the Partners Recovery Training. Okay, it's like, oh, I think it's close to 40 DVDs or more now at this point. And it's also a workbook. And this can all be done online. If So if you're in Europe or South Africa or Latin America and you want to do this, you can do it all online uh, to avoid the shipping. But this will give you a lot of information on partner stuff, partner material trauma stuff, and you can feel a lot more confident in that. You don't have to become a coach if you don't want to. You can just get a certificate of completion. Some ladies go on to being coaches, and we've actually, uh, we love to refer to coaches who've been trained by us. We really, really do. If you're a coach, you can, you know, talk to our office, or if you want to become one, call my office uh, at the number on the screen, 719-278-3708. They can walk you through what that process is. If you're a counselor, please get certified. We definitely need counselors to be certified in partner uh, trauma because there's so few places they can go and feel safe. So if you are considering this, okay, if you are considering this, you're thinking about it, maybe you're praying about it, I wanna let you know that 
We'll do all that we can to support you and help you. We want you to be successful. You will change women's lives. You will be part of saving marriages. You will be there to repair women who are forced to be divorced or want to be divorced after the trauma they've been through. You can really make a difference. You don't need an education. You don't need to look at your list of disqualifiers because I already gave you your qualifiers. If you can listen, read, and love, you're good. Find a place that people know. And sometimes it takes months to get it going. But then we've had groups five, 10, 15, 20 years later, they're still meeting, they're still caring. These are different women, but they're still leading and they're still doing what you broke the ice to do. So please push through. And if you can do this, even for six months or a year, you might change your community. And that's what starting a partners groups can do. So please, if you need any help, reach out to us, okay? If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you have a question, please put it in the box. We love you so much. I've dedicated my life to partners. I've written more for them than any human being on the planet by far. I understand your trauma and pain. And some women can step up and help heal others. And that's what your kind of sense of destiny is, your sense of calling, is your sense of, you know, feeling like you need to give back. So please do that. If we can be of help, give us a call.